I'm extremely proud of our cochlear implant program. It all started back in 1982. We were the first cochlear implant program in the country. And over the years, we've implanted over 3,500 patients from London, all over the UK and overseas. We work as a multidisciplinary team and we are lucky to have uh, very experienced team members. Recently, we have moved to this new facility at the Royal National ENT and Eastman Dental Hospital, opened by Her Majesty the Queen in February 2020. Our cochlear implant program has got very strong links with UCL and the Biomedical Research Unit and a lot of the new things that come out in the field of cochlear implants originated in our program. Deafness can be experienced in different levels and when we can amplify natural sound and enable someone to hear um, natural acoustic sound, we'll generally do that and sometimes that involves using hearing aids or other types of amplification devices. And so cochlear implantation comes into play when even the loudest conventional forms of amplification are not providing enough um, access to sound in a way that the brain can receive and, and understand. The cochlear implant replaces acoustic stimulation with a direct electrical stimulation to the nerve that delivers sound to the brain so that the brain can then, through rehabilitation, learn to interpret those signals as understandable speech and language. So broadly speaking, a cochlear implant will consist of two main parts um, and each different model will look slightly different, but I'm just going to talk you through one. So here we've got the bit that you might recognise because this is the bit that sits outside of the head and is visible on people that have cochlear implants out and about in public. You've got a microphone and processor and that's also connected to a coil. The microphone in this case sits on the ear and this hook helps, to, helps it to sit in place. This will receive sound via the microphone and digitise it and send it towards the coil which then connects via magnet through the scalp to the internal component. So this is a model of the internal component. This is the portion that is surgically implanted. You'll see that it's very slim now, um, so that it's, it's really not very palpable under the skin um, compared to what it was in previous generations. Um, looking more closely at it, you've got a receiver stimulator, which connects via magnet to the external portion, and connected to that is an electrode and that's the bit that's threaded into the cochlea very carefully in order to provide bespoke electrical stimulation to different parts of the inner ear. A cochlear implant is designed to provide a sensation of sound to, to adults who are severely to profoundly deaf in both ears and who find it very difficult to communicate in everyday life. It's not a perfect solution and the outcome can vary greatly from one person to another. For that reason, we do a fairly thorough assessment to find out whether a person is suitable for cochlear implant and whether it's something that they actually would like to have. The fruit lies on the ground. Uh, the fruit. Um. Assessment involves seeing our audiologist, our rehabilitation team and our medical team, we look at each patient individually. Can I have your hearing aid, please? When you meet the audiologist, they will look at your hearing aids, make sure they're working, will test your hearing, measure the benefit from the hearing aids, and do any more intensive audiology tests that you might need. When you meet the speech and language therapist, they will look at why you want to have a cochlear implant, about how your deafness affects your communication in everyday life, and look at how the cochlear implant might change that. We need to make sure that your expectations will actually meet what we think we can offer you with a cochlear implant. Tell me about your hearing loss. When did you first notice it? Um, about 10 years ago. And did it affect one ear or both ears? It's both ears. The surgeon will talk to you about the history of your deafness and look in your ears and try to establish a cause for the hearing loss if that's possible. This is the results of your hearing test. Mm -hmm. Normal hearing is around 20 decibels 
and your hearing thresholds in both ears are way below the normal thresholds. You also meet our radiology team where you'll have an MRI scan and a CT scan. The MRI scan will look at the nerves of hearing and the CT scan will look at the more bony parts of your inner ear. Yeah, we try to do all of the assessment on one day, but occasionally we need to do some additional tests and you may need to come back on another day to have those done. After you've completed your assessment, all the results will be discussed in a multidisciplinary team meeting and we come out with a recommendation whether we think a cochlear implant would be suitable for you or a different type of implant would be more suitable. We might find that simply just adjusting your hearing aids might be the solution for your hearing problem. But at the same time, you will need to make your own mind up about whether this is something that you'd like to go ahead with. So it's, it's quite a big commitment from you yourself. And I'm happy to tell you that we would be able to help you with a cochlear implant. That's, that's really fantastic news, thank you. We think as a team that your left ear would be more suitable for to receive the cochlear implant. At the outcome appointment, the surgeon would go through the preparation for surgery, the surgical procedure, and what to expect following the surgery. The cochlear implant surgery nowadays is relatively routine, straightforward surgery. Like any operation, there are some risks, and at your outcome appointment, we will be discussing with you your individual risks. If you decide that you would like to go ahead, we will arrange for a surgery date and you will have a preoperative anaesthetic assessment done to check your suitability to have a general anaesthesia. The final step prior to having surgery is to have an appointment with our audiologist to choose which type of implant you would like to receive. In our program, we are proud that we offer all major implant manufacturers and if there is no clinical indication for a specific type of implant the decision is entirely yours which type of implant you would like to go for. The Royal National Ear, Nose and Throat Hospital comprises of two buildings so the outpatient building on Huntley Street and then another building called Grafton Way building which is a minute and a half walk down the road and all the surgeries take place in the Grafton Way building we do recognise that a lot of patients are maybe dependent on communication aids and you'll be asked um, quite early on whether or not you require British Sign Language. We also have an iPad and that provides audio as well as video communication. And then we will come and see you on the ward and take the head bandage off. We also have a whiteboard and pen if you prefer to write things down. And we have a, a communications book which is quite comprehensive. You, you choose whatever suits you. Cochlear implant surgery on average takes between an hour and a half to two and a half hours uh, and so depending on when you have your operation perhaps in the morning the expectation is you will go home later on in the afternoon. If perhaps you're a little bit later on in the afternoon to have the surgery then you might need to stay one night. It's extremely rare for patients to stay more than a night. When you're ready to go home you will be going home with a bandage on your head that we will ask you to take it off the following morning. We normally would see you back in clinic in one week time to check that the operation site has healed well and at the same time you will have a specialized type of scan to check on the position of the cochlear implant. So following the checkup you will receive a series of appointments to program your implant. You have on average four rehabilitation sessions with an audiologist and a speech and language therapist. And on the very first appointment, we will be switching on the processor, which is the external portion of the implant. Very, very slowly and carefully, we will gradually turn up the sound until you can just about hear a very small sound, a small beep. And we do that right across the electrode array using all the different frequencies. And when that's completed, we then move on to the, to the louder sounds. That will then create what we call a map. And the map is then loaded into the processor and we then switch the processor on. When you first get the cochlear implant, the sound you get will be robotic, very beepy, 
will have an echo and you'll probably come in here and go, oh, I don't like this. I've made such a mistake, prefer my hearing aid. But what happens is it, that sound changes over time. I just wonder how you got on last week after your switch on. Um, it's been okay. Um, there's been some people I can't completely understand and they need to repeat things, but generally it seems a lot clearer as the week's gone on. I can hear all the normal sounds around the house now, the doorbell, I can hear that, um, and someone knocking on the door, I can hear water going down the plug pl- pl- hole, and I can hear the children yeah. chattering away and stuff like that. Right. So for you, it might be a really wonderful experience on Switch On 1, but for another person, it might take up to Switch On 2 or Switch On 3 before they start to feel really comfortable and at home with the device. Just repeat back what you hear. T. T. Hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. You do have to work at it a bit. But I think we guide you along the way where we give you ideas to do at home, do on your computer, your phone, with family, with friends, so that you are able to practice. Generally, people who have a shorter duration of profound deafness tend to do a little bit better than the people that, let's say, were born with profound deafness. Having said that, If people fully engage and listen to the team and the advice that we give, they tend to move along uh, their journey uh, more smoothly. So at the beginning, there are a lot of appointments and you're coming here all the time. But then as you get used to wearing the cochlear implant, then those appointments space out. Then you'll be seen six months after your surgery and then a year after your surgery. Everyone brings something different to the table, speech and language therapy, audiology and our nursing staff. You know, so it's not a journey where the patient is left on their own after the surgery. Um, they're very well supported and that is, you know, as if not more crucial um, to the overall outcome than the actual surgery itself.